was pretty astonished by this result right here. Um, that all we have right here is three uh, radicands involving the symmetric symmetric sort of expression here, x plus y, x plus z, x plus z, all over the same denominator. But all we're given is that um, that these are positive real numbers, x, y, and z are positive real numbers, and that's it. And somehow or another, this constant of the square root of six just kind of magically pops out. And I thought that was just stunning, you know? And But as usual, there's a little trick at the end that makes it work. It's not quite the miracle it might appear. Now, what I've written down right here is, is the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. This is probably the most widely used inequality. It deals with inner products and vectors. This says the square of an inner product is less than or equal to the product of the squares of the magnitudes, I guess, if you want to think of it from a vector point of view. But another way, it kind of has a linguistic ring to it. It says the uh, square of the sum of the products is less than or equal to the product of the sum of the squares. And so that's kind of a way to remember it linguistically. But in any event, you kind of use it as a sledgehammer right here. Notice that your a sub i is right here. It turns out it's super useful right here to set the a sub i's. Um, to set a, all the a sub i's equal to one. Now, starting in this case, uh, n is equal to three, right? n is equal to three. We're, we're dealing with three variables here. And we're using different names, you know, x, y, and z instead of a sub i, b sub i, and all that. But uh, anyway, so n equals three, three variables. And also, all the a sub i's are equal to one. That's because this is a for all condition. This holds for all sequences uh, AI. I think it holds even for complex numbers, all right? So it holds for all AI, BIs. And so we have the carte blanche, the full discretion to actually pick what we want. And so we picked all the A sub I's, A sub one, A sub two, A sub three is equal to one, 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 one. This is infamously called the uh, one trick, okay? so. The nice thing about this is if you'll notice what's inside this uh, parenthetical expression that's squared is just what we're trying to prove, right? You see, we just multiplied one by each of these objects that we're interested in finding this upper bound of six, or square root of six, excuse me. And so you just carry on. Uh, on the right-hand side, you, I, I wrote down one squared, not superfluous. It's intended to be instructive. All right, and then uh, notice that x plus y over x plus y plus z is just this object squared. So you see the squaring over here removes the radicals for the b sub i's. This would be your b sub one, b sub two, b sub three. And when you get to this position where you go, okay, great, at least you have a three right here. But you'll notice that what happens here is something favorable algebraically. We have two x's right here. We have two y's and we have two z's. So that means two times the product x plus y plus z. All right. And so the twos, the x plus y plus z factors actually cancel. And so we get two times three is equal to six. And the very next step is just to take the square roots of both sides. All right. And so you actually get this amazing upper bound when it appeared, when it appeared to be no structure there. I thought, where did that come from? You know, there was no initial condition other than the real numbers were positive, and yet the square root of six just popped out. Well, it popped out precisely because. If you don't pay attention, you don't notice that uh, when you combine this into a single fraction, you actually have double the denominator. That's what makes it work. You have double the denominator. So a fraction where the numerator is double the denominator is equal to two necessarily. All right. Okay. And I, if, if you guys, if you want to check this for special cases, try it out for X uh, equals to one. Uh, y equals to two. And you'll see it's a pretty sharp inequality right here. It's uh, very, very close if you try these values. But what this is saying for all x, y, and z, this thing is guaranteed to be less than root six, basically because of this little miracle right here. All right, but again, try z equals three if you want. And you can try any combination of numbers you want. These are the only ones I try because it's fairly easy to do the computation. And see if you can verify that, it, that the inequality holds for these particular choices without using a calculator.